sure it feels like, um, for some of you, uh, I've been here forever. I mean, I'm furniture. And maybe for others of you who, uh, who don't know me or uh, have never, we haven't met yet, it may feel like I just, I just got here. But I, I did arrive, uh, we did arrive in August of, of 2021, so I've been here for about six or seven months or so. And the way that COVID has put such a pause on so many things about, you know, how we live our lives and go about our day to day, you know, you may even say the same about Father James. You know, you may feel like he just got here and yet he's been here for, for now a couple of years. It's been difficult uh, to get to know people, to, to meet people and socialize just for obvious reasons through COVID. You know, we, don't, we haven't had the time or the opportunity or the space to really get to know one another or to even to, to greet each other, to say, to say hello. The other part of the, the problem is um, how you come to Mass. You know, you, you come to Mass basically all, and almost in, in disguise. You know, for all I know that this, this could be my brother or could be a complete stranger to me. It, it's hard to tell because we only see you kind of from the, you know, from the forehead uh, to the tip of your, top of your nose. However, the good news is that, as Father James mentioned, uh, starting tomorrow, um, we, we begin the phase process of, of hopefully seeing the end uh, to COVID as we work through three phases of what the province set up. And hopefully, God willing, by May or at some point, we'll, we'll, everything will be, you know, the, the COVID and in restrictions and exclusions and all that stuff will be, be a thing of the past. Won't that be great? Yes? Amen to that. If, if COVID has taught us anything, it's taught us about how we need to go that extra mile, how we need to do that extra effort when it comes to hospitality. It's been a real chain, a challenge. Hospitality takes on an ever greater importance to make new people feel welcome and at home here. We are in our second week of our preaching series, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Last week, Father James spoke about the, the need for intentional hospitality. As people, new people, walk through our, the front door of our parish, through our church, we don't know where they are spiritually. We don't know where they are emotionally. But we do know one thing. They are here with us. And we need to make them at home, make them feel at home. Last Saturday, we held our second um, session with our dreaming committee. And Fiona Riley uh, spoke to us. Now, Fiona is the, the global director of, uh, uh, director of global strategy with Divine Renovation. If you don't know what, about Divine Renovation, if you're not familiar with it, it's a ministry that's based here in Halifax that work with parishes around the globe to help them de develop a, a missional mindset in their parish. And she talked about some of the things that she sees going on in the parishes around the world, how we work through COVID and, and the new reality of, of what church will look like going forward. She acknowledges that as we have at this Mass, we have a, an online digital presence and, and how we, we work with and deal with the in-presence part of our church, our parish. We are physically here in our space as we worship. Because she said something very profound, and the thing that struck me that she said was that she said, in-person needs to be personal. And I want you to think about that for a second. She says, in-person needs to be personal. Because one thing she talked about was that as new people come through our doors and, and guests and visitors, they, have, they may have very different experiences and different mindsets than ours. They, come for, they may come to us from a very different place than we are. And we have to be receptive and acknowledge where they are. We have to meet them where they are. And we have to be able to, to offer them a spiritual home so that they feel comfortable and welcome and invited here at Our Lady of Guadalupe. In person 
needs to be personal. We need to remove the the barriers that guests may feel and, and help them to believe that they belong here with us. Now that is not as easy as it sounds. One of the things that Father James spoke about last night, one of the, the, the key takeaway for me in his homily last week is when he said that intentional hospitality will always take us out of our comfort zone. Our hospitality has to serve the needs of others and new people as they come to our parish. To do authentic, intentional hospitality takes effort to do it well. In our gospel, Jesus welcomes those who come to him to be healed. It says that a great multitude of people came from Judea and Jerusalem. These were Jewish people, the people of Jesus. But it also says that not only did they come from Jerusalem and Judea, they also came from Sidon and Tyre. The Titan and, si- and Sidon were in the northern part of the, the country. And it was, prim- it was not Jewish people who lived in Tyre and Sidon. These were Gentiles. These were non-Jewish people who traveled a great distance in order to experience Jesus. These were outsiders. These were CFAs. Everybody know what a CFA means? That, that acronym? Come from away. These people who Jesus welcomed and healed were come from a ways, were were outsiders, were people who lived outside of Jerusalem and Judea. It says they had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. Jesus did not differentiate between the Jew and the Gentile. Jesus welcomed everyone. Jesus welcomed the poor and the hungry, the lost, the lonely. He welcomed those who struggled, who felt excluded or unloved or abandoned. Jesus welcomed all of them. I want to tell you a story about... um, an experience that my wife Patty and I had last summer. We went to a, a parish uh, in this city, not this parish, by the way, just to put you at ease, um, for the first time. We'd never been there before. It was a Sunday morning. We decided to go to Mass, and uh, we went to this church, and we walked in, and there were a few parishioners who were standing there t- talking amongst themselves, and so we gave our, our name and our phone number, And uh, we proceeded, we came out of the entryway and out of the the foyer and into the main church. And I think we probably did what almost any of you would do when you first walk into a church you're not familiar with. You sort of scan, right? Sort of scan, okay, where can I sit? Where can we sit? Might sit over there or we might sit there. No, that's too close to the altar. Uh, We want to sit over there. Do you know what I mean? So Patty and I, we were assessing where we're going to have a seat and and uh, we thought, okay, let's, we're going to go over there. So we start heading there. And there was, a, there was a woman who was standing not that far away from us. And I knew she was part of, we realized she was part of the hospitality team because she had a badge on. Right? That's how you identify somebody in the hospitality team. They have a badge on. And as we moved towards our seats, she said one word to us. And now that word wasn't morning or welcome or hello. You know what that one word was? Sanitize. <laughs> she said sanitize, but she didn't say it like sanitize. She said sanitize, like that. Sanitize. Now, we don't know if she's talking to us or not, so Patty and I continue moving, and she said it again. Sanitize. In fact, she said it three times. So, this gets our attention and we turn to the woman um, and she just points. That's what she does. She just goes, I think she might be kicking us out. But she's pointing and she's pointing to the dispenser that's 
stuck to the wall by the entrance of the church. We were guests that day, but we weren't treated like guests. How we greet people and how we treat people matters, doesn't it? Phil Nickerson uh, gave a powerful testimony last weekend in Father James's homily, and if, if you haven't seen it or, or heard it, I encourage you to go to our website and, and watch it. Because Phil talks about his first time coming through our front door. And he had a couple of things on his, on his checklist that he said, these are the things that I feel I need in order to come to a, a new parish, a new, a new place, a new church. And one of them, high on the list, was a warm welcome. And that's what Phil got when he came through that front door. A warm welcome. It emphasizes the fact that in person needs to be personal. It's a powerful testimony, and I invite you to watch it. New people will be coming through our front doors as, as restrictions are lifted, and COVID allows us to gather again fully as a parish, as a community, and it's important for us to do hospitality well. Hospitality is something that is owned by every parishioner. Not just the small group of people who welcome us at the front door. So here's what I'd like you to do. Now if you're a guest with us, or if you're a guest watching online, you, you get a pass. You're off the hook. But if you're not, if you're a parishioner, I'd like you to turn to somebody near you and say, I'm a host. Okay? Go ahead and do that. Turn to somebody near you and say, I'm a host. I'm a host. Because if you're a parishioner, you are a host. Hospitality involves all parishioners. So, last thought, and I thought I'd end with a little humor. I want you to, for a second, to imagine that this is your first time, that you have, this is your first visit to Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish, and when you walked in that door 45 minutes ago or so, was your first time. And I want you to imagine who you would like to be uh, welcomed by. Okay, I've got a couple of examples for you. Imagine who you would like to be welcomed by. Okay? As part of our hospitality team, who would you rather? Okay, Harry from Home Alone. Okay, remember when he burns the top of his head? He and Mervyn finally get into the house and they meet, and Mervyn says, Harry, why are you dressed like a chicken? Have you seen this movie? This movie is hilarious. You have to see it. Okay, so who would you rather, Harry or Forrest Gump? Okay. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get inside. Okay, so who would you rather, Harry or Forrest Gump? It's up to you. Or, Carula DeVille from 101 Dalmatians. She was pretty nasty. Or finally, Edith Bunker. (laughs) I loved Edith because she was always such a positive person. She always had a smile. I look forward to serving with you as hosts in the parish as we welcome soon, very soon, the opportunity to gather and socialize and get to know one another and welcome new people, new families, guests. When we can all look up and look around and actually see each other's faces You know, see each other's teeth. That would be nice. Not just faces from, you know, the bridge of your nose to to your your hairline. Of course, my hairline's not very good. (laughs) Okay? Won't that be great? That will be great. And I can't wait. Amen?